Thank you so much for such a wonderful contribution. I think you saw me smiling, meaning I was almost getting everything. So quickly, <laughs> yeah, so quickly we've talked so much about investors. I would just like you to tell us what are the type of investors? What should we should come to our mind when we hear the term investor? Thank you. Right. Okay, I'm going to take you back to some of my slides. Okay. You can see my screen. Yes. Right. So, answering that question, we've got the different types of um, investor. You've got banks, yeah. and you know that if you're going to a bank, what you actually are asking for, you're generally asking for loans. Generally, banks will require collateral, yeah, um, and generally banks will charge an interest. So basically banks at this stage may be, you know, one of your less attractive options. Then we've got private and personal investors. And generally, most often, these are the people that you may know, that know you. So again, you, the person, are important. They may have also contributed to your passion. They may have encouraged you. And these may be friends. They may, may be family members. You know, they may be your mentors, etc. They can be people who start out with you, who, you know, you who are interested in you and who are looking out for you at the beginning and they just see your potential and they're happy to be, you know, looking to invest in you. And a number of the smaller company, uh, uh, smaller entrepreneurs, we rely on these type of people. Then you've got the venture capitalists. Now the venture capitalists are a lot bigger. They are people that, you know, are looking to invest large amounts and they have In a, you know millions um, of dollars um, that they would come they, that would be they would be looking to invest generally. So basically, um, although venture capitalists now with the times they have actually um, you know you, you've got a number of venture capitalists uh, coming into Kenya. So just to the right, I, I, I was reading the Daily Nation. And I saw an article, and it's called Kenya Startup Funding Rises to 11 billion shillings in one year. And local startups raised 33.17 billion, so it's $291 million in 2021, up to 21.74 21 billion, uh, billion shillings, or $191 million in 20, sorry, from, so in 2020, so that's a jump of over 52%, yeah? So money is actually coming into Kenya. You can actually see, you know, that it's really um, something that we have um, a lot going for us, yeah? Uh, and we're not talking necessarily about the, the SOMO people having, uh, you know, attracting those, but why not, on the other hand? Yeah, and then we've got angel investors, uh, we've got crowdfunding, and we've got social impact and entrepreneur uh, enterprise investors. Now, SOMO falls primarily into that category, but the social impact, of course, they're they're looking for people who are not only creating um, a financial return, but they actually are also. Uh, giving you a positive and as, as they, they are positively impacting in terms of the social environment. Crowdfunding, you've, you may have seen, is often something that is generated um, through the through uh, online investors. You know, somebody might look and say, okay, I'm going to put in 
at uh, 10,000 shillings, another 10,000, and again, it builds up. Yeah, angel investors, background investors, um, who anonymously put in funds. Then you've got peer-to-peer -peer lenders. In other words, people in groups who you know, offer funding to small businesses uh, and they work and they specialize um, on lending across. So in other words, they're in similar, they, they lend across simil similar uh, um, industries or sectors. Yeah, so basically those are the, the, the types of investors, but basically but what, I, what I'm saying is, when you're looking small, you're looking to find that person that believes in you, that person that would give, that look, is looking to give you, um, you know, a small amount of money and a, cont a contribution. Um, I'm going to take you back a little, if I may, um, and talk about a story. I started with, um, uh, we spoke right at the beginning of talked about who you are and we talked about the importance of who you are and how you come across. I hope my internet's got not going to cut, but it's important that you build an, a, a, a compelling story. What is your story? You know, why have you gone into this product? And again, in SOMO, I've heard many very, very inter interesting stories about life, yeah, about why you've seen the gap. It's about from your, from your experience, you know, and, and the likes. So um, that is something that really does sell you. And a couple of my captions, I grew up where my father took early retirement from teaching and put his hand into entrepreneurship. That's my story. Other stories are grown up in my neighborhood where we had no running water. You know, what have they, what have they done about that? They've done something about it. Another story, after working 10 years in the sector, I watched how we lost customers and attribute it to ABC again. Yeah, so what are these compelling stories? I'm going to very quickly read Bethlehem's story. I'm very happy and proud of being a female entrepreneur. When I was young, they said, a woman is a woman. A man should take care of you. Moreover, she felt that she was doing something genuine. People want their brands to be real. There is an urgent need to create more African-owned brands, delivering world-class products to the global market to drown out charitable organizations selling their variety of messages about and images of Africa. Let's face it, it's pretty hard to convince someone to buy what you are selling when someone else has convinced them that you are solely occupied with swatting away flies from your face. Yeah, so um, my response. Wow, thank you so much for such a wonderful contribution. Now, before I move to the last question, uh, some people may be asking themselves what Abyss Limited is. I'll just give you a chance to tell us more about Abyss, what you do, and everything that entails Abyss Limited. Thank you, Bhakti. Okay, great, thanks. So Abyss Limited stands actually for Apposite Business and Investment Services. We started in 2007, and we actually started from an area that I had been in for over a decade, and that was investment advisory, because I had been in the stock market for 11 years. And when I came out of it, everybody still knew Althea as an investment advisor. So I said, okay, I will set up a biz to actually serve people who still who knew me and who wanted to use me. Um, and so it started from that premise. We then went into um, what I called um, outsourcing. Yeah, so business outsourcing. And that was primarily to get into, to, to provide services, particular, primarily of uh, administration and HR. So I would go into organizations and help them set up 
um, you know, their HR systems, their operation systems, and their admin systems, so that they could focus on their core business. Um, it expanded into uh, going, helping organizations in terms of strategy, and that was strategic development and implementation. Um, and that was helping businesses, you know, rewrite their business plans and then working with them to actually implement them. So that's when I, when I talk about that strategy and strategic development. If you go through that process and you start your business by, you know, creating that level of formality, it really provides you with um, a tool, yeah, and a guide as well as milestones, potential milestones in your business. So that was um, where ABIS ended up going as well. Um, and more recently, you know, what we found was that when we go into some of these organizations, we, find we have people that require training. And I just personally am very passionate about training. I'm also passionate about mentoring. And um, from the training angle, in fact, I'm a very, very fussy person. If I go into a restaurant and I receive bad service, that person will know. And I won't just uh, necessarily complain, but I will point out to them the service that I was, that was expected. So there's that side of it, but again, just simply, from what I've been saying, to me, it is extremely important to give the person the right tools for them to understand business. Yeah, for them to, if, you, if, you, if you're in a position of a business startup, you should know about what you need to do. You should know a little bit about the financials and you should know the pros and cons about it. So we introduced um, training and um, we, we uh, collaborated with a UK company where we were, we were able to actually offer training courses with certified um, uh, or certifications and accreditations from the UK. And so basically, um, you know, that is what ABIS is about. We're small, yeah, and we primarily work with, with startups because you know that's what we that's where we feel our most impact is with so that's basically what abis is and who abis is thank you so much for that it was amazing we now understand and personally would love to depart or get some training from your team that would be so right. amazing yeah so right. lastly lastly uh, I know money is such a scarce resource, and uh, at times may not have all of it. But then, what would you do with the money if you add all of it? That is, if you add all the money, what would you actually do with it? Thank you. Yeah, I'm going I'm, I'm to actually look and see how how exactly that question was asked because when I saw it, I <laughs> I, I thought of another response. So if you'll give me one minute, <laughs> let me actually look at and see okay. how you actually asked that question because uh, okay. um, where is it now? I had thrown it out uh, and looked and was looking at it and I thought to myself, can you ask it exactly how you asked it as I as I think yeah, through let me, some let of me my just, papers. Okay, let me just read yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the question goes, if you had yeah. all the money in the world, what would you do yeah. with it? Yes, you see exactly that that that, yes. that, that was that was it. I, as I just say, I, I've now found found my paper. <laughs> and you know, I, I actually, as I thought about this and I said, do we need all the money in the world? Do I need all the money in the world? Yeah. That was my first reaction. Yeah. I said, but if I did have a lot of money and more, I would probably invest it in the likes of some of the startups, yeah, people that could do with it. And I would also be, I think, pretty 
philanthropic in it, I would give away money, yeah? But what I also thought about was, you know, poverty and hardship. And very often it is said that for all the money in the world, there should not be poverty and hardship. I thought about our country, Kenya. You know, when you travel to certain parts of the country, which are known as the bread baskets of Kenya, the amount of food that we see, yeah, just driving along the streets, the amount of food that we see, we should not have poverty in this country, yeah? So, so much about what money is about and what food is about, it's about distribution. It's about equitable distribution. And if we have that, you know, one does not need to have a few people having all the money in the world. Yeah, it just means that people who do have so much of the money will have less of it. And people who don't have that money will have more of it and will be able to survive. So, you know, that's, that's my um, response, yeah? Create an equitable society, yeah? Create equitable societies, and you don't need to ask people about having all the money in the world. I go back to what I said right at the beginning. We're not, we don't need to be get rich quick people. And that's, you know, the last thing that I would say to our SOMO entrepreneurs, yeah? I spoke about, um, the the um, uh, independence where people had an opportunity. So that may have hastened, you know, the, 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 the move from not so rich to having a bit of money and to having a developed business. But generally it takes time and it takes all of what I've been speaking about to general, to, to build a business. So for us, for our entrepreneurs, forget about this get rich quick. I'm not saying that they, you, you may have fantastic business ideas that actually mean that you do move from zero to a lot more very quickly, but that's not really the essence of business. The essence of business is sustainable business. And unless you're in business for the long haul, you know, you won't have sustainable business. And that's really what our entrepreneurs need to look at. Yeah. Um, I've been around, I've been working for over 30 years. I'm not rich. Yeah. I may be, let's see, I may be comfortable, but I'm not rich. Yeah because it was never my goal to get rich quick. My goal was to work hard. My goal was to persevere. Yeah. And my goal was to contribute. So when I leave this earth, somebody can say Althea did this. Simple. Wow. Thank you so much for such an insightful contribution. That was a very interesting question. I'm, I'm so glad you actually captured it so well. I'll take it back to Sally. Sally, it's back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Um, yeah, so we've come to the end of the Chanuka chat. It was extremely, um, I don't know, I, I, I can't even have words. I don't have words to explain how it was, but I'm just very, very grateful, Althea. Thank you for blessing us with your knowledge um, around pitching to investors. I believe our entrepreneurs will learn so much, as much as myself and Jacob have. Um, and I'm looking forward to having you here again and again and again to discuss about many other topics. Yes, thank you so much, thank Althea. So I really much, appreciate Sally. it. You're yes. welcome. Thank you so much and all the best to SOMO and the SOMO entrepreneurs. Thank you. Yes.